All right, welcome, TTL. We have a last-minute Sunday showdown match featuring uh, Big Mr. Big Happy Ron Mexico versus Turtle, who's uh, representing uh, the 1337 squad, where Ron is is uh, kicking kicking dust with uh, wherever I may roam. So tonight we have uh, two two new casters there too. Well, not new to THL, but at least new to Sunday showdown. We have a uh, geranium battle and a uh, nice Jewish owl joining me. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, I'm doing very well. I'm super excited for this match. Uh, I'm I'm probably even more excited than Turtle is, which isn't saying much. Yeah, Turtle just and Ron just kind of just rolling the dice and let's go play. Okay, let's do stream. Okay. Yeah, Ron was uh, Ron was absolutely hyped for for getting the stream up and off the ground and then turtle was like uh yeah yeah okay um, whatever whatever you say ron so uh and it's a it's very high stakes as well for ron whereas it is not at all for turtle so we are going to uh, definitely see whether that comes into their their mentality yeah yeah so all right so i'm pretty sure it's uh i'm just gonna verify that it's a double priest band so i don't know if if the lineups themselves are going to be, they're almost mirror except for the Druid and, and Demon Hunter. So, what's your guys' take on how this almost mirror match will go? Um, I think Ron Mexico having that Druid instead of Demon Hunter will definitely work to his advantage. Uh, because if he opts for a Primordial Druid, that's going to be able to pretty easily take down both Demon Hunter and Warrior for Turtle. Um, and if he opts for a token druid, that'll still be able to probably take down uh, Death Rattle Demon Hunter as well as do good numbers against uh, Face Hunter. Yeah, it's it's quite possible that uh, Turtle does bring the OTK DH. Uh, he had a very high win rate on it uh, in uh, earlier on in the season. Um, he did not bring it last week, but uh, that does not mean that he's not going to bring it today. Uh, also, uh, Turtle is undefeated as soon as the turtle card got printed. And if Warrior's not being banned, that means it's in his lineup. Oh. And I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Warrior be starting, sure. turtle, turtle be going. Well, Ron will be dead. That's you just have to hope that, yeah. that Ron Mexico does have an answer for that turtle card. You know, perhaps there's, there's a certain <clears throat> threat that could disable the effects of turtle. Maybe he's put that in some of his decks to help him out in that matchup. Just something, something mm. to upend a turtle. So, I mean, even if you put uh, some sort of owl card, some sort of uh, nice owl card into his deck, I don't even know if he'd draw it. Uh, that's, uh, that's my <laughs> thoughts on that matter. Um, but uh, I also think that, uh, that Ron is over here with the hunter, with his class. Ron is the face man. You see it every single time on Around the Saloon. He knows how to go face, and that is face hunter that he's playing. So they're both playing their, their cards. Face hunter, the turtle in warrior. It's really going to be a clash of personalities here as we get into the matches. Yep. I just asked both players to get going here so for our viewers there turtle's gonna be on the bottom versus spectate for our casters and ron is gonna be at the top see eyeballs Sylvanas versus Rexa. it's like right off the bat we're starting with a hunter mirror forsaken yeah and as far as I can see, these look like normal face hunters. Yeah, uh, I'd say the uh, the hand favors uh, Turtle just a little bit here with this early game, but uh, we do see the Barack Code Obama and the Mancrick combo coming in a little bit later in Ron's hand. So if he can weather the storm at the beginning, he's going to have a very powerful four into five. Into another five. Uh, I'd say at this point, the hand favors Turtle quite a lot. Um, Face Hunter is a deck, especially in the mirror, you don't really want to go second, but Kolkar Pack Runner is a really great card if you're going second, because you can take advantage of that coin to swing the board back in a major way 
very early on in the game. And Ron's hand, on the other hand, isn't going to be doing a whole lot until those later turns, once he's either gotten down his Barak Kodobane or his Warsong Wrangler. Yeah, we can see that uh, Ron can put something onto the board here, but it's really just going to get dealt with immediately. Uh, so perhaps this, this Volpertinger uh, might be the play on three, despite the fact that he wants to play that Mancrick. But even so, uh, the Kolkar Packrunner can just develop so much tempo alongside the quick shot, the adorable infestation, that it gets cleared immediately. And we are going to see the one drops coming out, coming off a little off curve uh, to do the whole Mancrick into Kodobama, but we got the Warsong into Trampling Rhino instead as your power four and five into five. And uh, in all fairness, Ron could decide to just play Mancrick this next turn, even though it would be slightly off curve. It's the, the same stat line as that Warsong Wrangler would be, and it would allow him to draw an extra card with Barak Kodoban. It's just that I think that he's maybe falling a bit too far behind to, uh, to not develop his own threats and push his own face damage. If he just goes ahead and goes with the more passive Mancrick into Brock Kodobain line, then he's going to fall even further behind, not be able to get the Trampling Rhino up and running, not be able to uh, get the face damage that Turtle has to respect him a bit more. Can we take a moment to mention that, that third beast we saw with that Warsong Wrangler? Looks oh, like Moonfang. Ron Mexico. Yeah, it's decided to run Moonfang in this deck. Yeah, that was a. Uh, it's a somewhat popular ad in uh, in certain cases. Uh, I've seen some players in the latest MT, uh, sorry, uh, Masters Tour run uh, Moonfang in various lists. Uh, and yeah, it, it can just be extremely hard for certain classes to get through, like Rush Warrior that we might see later. Yeah, yeah, I know the the sort of main reasons for its inclusion were against both Rush Warrior and OTK Demon Hunter. So I think from Ron, it's, it's a great spot to put that in when you're looking down both Demon Hunter and Warrior, uh, and you're you're being forced to play that Hunter. So here we got the delicious six damage, and clearing off this five one here uh, alongside with this ra trampling Rhino. I like this line a lot more, uh, clearing off two things, developing that man crank, and setting up for that rock code of Bay next turn. The problem is, if you leave minions on board versus Hunter, they're just going to punish the fact that you're playing the game. And I think Ron's probably going to be forced to trade his own Rhino in to Turtle's Rhino, just to not take seven in the face from it. As a reminder, as Ron's health gets even lower, this piercing shot can hit your own minions. Uh, so we may see just, uh, well, the Mars Wolf Cup is not being saved, but it could have been saved alongside the piercing shot to deal five damage later on in the game. And now here's what we've all been waiting for. Is he going to play the Barak Kodobane, or is he going to finally decide to play the Trampling Rhino? Trampling Rhino will finally develop some counter pressure. However, the Barak Kodobane draws him a bunch of cards, mm -hmm. gets him all the value that he needs in order to stay longer into the game. I think that the Trampling Rhino is more of a, I need to end things now, counter race, and the Barak Kodobane is, I have a few more turns, which he doesn't. Uh, and... I can uh, I can draw cards. I believe turtles turtle still has quite a lot of damage here. Um, yeah, this is one off lethal if I'm doing my math correctly for turtle. Takes the opportunity to play his own Kodobane. 
And with the Mancrit, that's basically going to seal up the deal. Along with the ability to likely just quick shot his opponent's Rhino. Um, or could opt to just send that damage face. Um, quick shotting is the safer play, although I don't really know if there's very many punishes that your opponent can have to it. Well, just removing the Tramping Rhino off the board means that Ron has no chance to even draw into uh, the uh, the weapon in order to have the Tramping Rhino attack multiple times uh, and have that lethal opportunity. Instead, Ron is conceding. I mean, his face hunter now has the the better matchups with the uh, with the the Moonfang, but very sad to see uh, Ron's pet class going down. Looks like. As, as I think is probably expected, Ron's decided to run it with Warrior. Um, deck that is quite favored into Face Hunter. Um, and we'll have to see if Turtle has decided to put the, the Moonfang in his deck. Yes, this is going to be the first War Song Rango that we are seeing. Ron Max go uh, with a Playmaker in his opening hand. I'm thinking that the Playmaker is probably going to get punished too often, but uh, there's chances where if you develop it early on and the, and the Hunter doesn't remove it, then you're going to have a much easier time clearing off whatever they do end up developing. Yeah. And now that the players are back, we're going to see exactly what they're keeping. Um, yeah, full mole from Turtle, just looking for something that can really get on board early game against Warrior. Um, Rush Warrior is a deck that is simultaneously pretty good at taking the board away from you and quite good at then snowballing that into a victory. So for the face hunter, you really have to get on board as fast as possible because once you reach the mid game, you're going to struggle to keep that board. And if you haven't pushed enough damage, you're not going to be able to close out the game. Ooh, and Ron has the opportunity to have some incredibly aggressive conditionings in his hand, if he wants it. Um, conditionings will help you stick your, your early minions and help you actually uh, trade up into the early face hunter minions, which you do need to do in order to uh, sort of stay even on board. But uh, conditioning is also some of the late game plans of the warrior. Another interesting tech, we're seeing the Mutinous in Ron's deck. We're seeing uh, quite a few Legendaries. Uh, the Mutinous probably means that there's also later going to be a Nazoth. Uh, Mutinous probably included against OTK DH, uh, if Turtle later brings that. So we'll see um, if Ron even reveals the Mutinous in this game. I don't know if I agree with Mutinous, meaning there's likely a Nazoth. Um, most Rush Warrior builds at this point have started putting in Mutinous because it's incredibly strong in the Rush Warrior mirror. If you're able, on turn 7, as Rush Warrior, you've usually only got Troublemakers and Alex sitting in your hand. And if you eat one of those, your opponent can't really come back from it. Here for a good time. Well, in this case, uh, we're seeing the four turn four. Turtle doesn't have the opportunity to actually punish this uh, Rakara, so uh, it does need to find. I guess this wound prey has to be the pick in order to actually deal with the Rakara on board, which, if it's left alone, will snowball uh, the game very far into Ron's favor. So far, that the uh, and Turtle probably won't be able to catch back up. I'm interested to see what Ron decides to do this turn, because we're a turn away from those conditionings leveling up, but if we don't play them this turn, then I was going to say we're likely hero power passing, but picking up that Warsong Outrider uh, does give us a pretty decent tempo play if we decide to go that way. Right? But I think I'd, I'd prefer to take probably this yeah. Crab Rider and then play one of these conditionings to just set up for future turns. Yeah, especially with double Overlord Runthak in hand, uh, you don't necessarily need 
all of your conditionings to be as strong as possible, you're going to get a lot of value from these Overload Run Facts, also buffing your cards. And the Crab Rider uh, being buffed just like that, instead of picking the 3-1, picking the 1-4 that becomes a 2-5, so that he doesn't get damaged by the Trampling Rhino. Heads up play that allows him to then use Overlord Run Fact to clear off the board of that you Trampling played, Rhino. You played the incorrect Run Fact. You gave your opponent too much info. You played the one discovered off of studies. Oh no. Misplay by Ron, um, but not a big deal. Getting down that run fact. Starting to buff up that hand. We're likely going to see the second run fact coming down next turn. Um, probably alongside the, the Dark Moon Rider, which is going to be a 4 4 at that point. Now, if we're seeing this Warsong Wrangler, we can see whether this Moonfang is being run and is not. So Turtle without the extra spicy Moonfang tech, uh, just looking to deal as much damage as possible, and this warrior is, is stabilizing quite well. Um, that was... Uh, I was going to say that was a order mistake, but I think Ron spotted that this Trampling Rider was drawn and decided he didn't want to leave a one health rider on board. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Very heads up play by Ron. Yes, uh, the warrior doesn't have many opportunities to heal back up, so really any amount of life that they can save is uh, exactly what they want here. Kolkar Packrunner, unless you get a very specific demon off, the demon companion isn't going to be enough to clear off this Overload Run Thack, so it looks like Trampling Rhino is probably the best choice, but I mean, against Rush Warrior, you know that all the cards are Rush. And we do actually end up getting the specific uh, card to uh, to deal with this Overlord run back. Yeah, eight center cream, very very powerful in in this sort of exact situation where you're able to play a few guys with rush and then trade them into the warrior's board. And this puts Ron in a very awkward position. Uh, he's kind of forced to take out this Ace Hunter Crane, but that leave, means leaving a few high priority targets on board for the Hunter what? in no. both that Kolkar Pack Runner and the Kolek. Yeah, the Kolek was actually by far the best, uh, best demon companion to get off of that. Not only does it stick around on the board, but it makes every single one of your cards more of a threat, and it's uh, going to beef up this trampling rhino in order to attack him whatever Ron leaves behind. No. Ron might not even want to play the imprisoned Ganarch because once it comes back, it's not going to be able to trade into anything and, and die. It has to stay around on the board, which leaves an opportunity for the face hunter to then trade and get that damage. Um, although, worth noting, it's, it's turn 7, and the warrior is still at 23, and there is that Alex in hand. Um, this is sort of the last push from face hunter and i think if ron is able to deal with this board and not die immediately to the rhino in the next couple turns he's going to be able to pretty easily swing this back in his favor uh, just by alexing his own face it might have also been the opportunity for you to mutinous uh you do know that your opponent has the trampling rhino in hand you've seen it off of the um off of the warsong wrangler uh, and you also knew the Marshall Cup, so it was a 50-50 there to get rid of one of the Trampling Rhinos. Uh, but Ron decides not to take it. Uh, that he instead needs to get this conditioning down and, unfortunately, fall behind on board even more. I, I sort of dislike playing the Mutinous there, just because then you're leaving that Ace Hunter Crane on board. And it's going to mean that even if you hit that high roll and hit the Trampling Rhino, your opponent can just trade into that Mutinous on board with most things, or if they find a spell, get another guy to trade in on board with. And then you're you're still pretty far behind, even though you've eaten away that rhino. Even though you are behind on board, I think just the, the fact that the face hunter is going to be trading into the mutinous, uh, not damaging your face as much, you see this opportunity, or in this instance, uh, he's in the same sort of position, uh, and still unable to get to that Alex. If he had the turn where he got rid of the trampling rhino, got that 50-50, he might have lived long enough to get to that Alex, but I think there's no opportunity here. Yeah, yeah, and the Hunter gets another victory. I think the, the Rush Warrior really 
just didn't draw the cards that it needed. Conditioning is a super strong card in some matchups, but not really the best in that Hunter matchup because um, you're, you're fighting so much for the board in those earlier turns that you can't afford to be passing part of your turn just to get um, potential future buffs. So I'm going to set this up. Uh, this is... This is end. This is the end for uh, for Ron almost. Uh, if Ron does end up losing this, that means that his entire team has no chance in making playoffs. He needs to get a reverse 3-0 sweep in order to actually get his team into a chance of playoffs. Uh, and even then, it's still just a chance. But uh, if we see Turtle sweeping as he used to do so often in in past seasons of Hero, then. Uh, Unfortunately, Ron will not make it. For the and it looks like mm, Ron is running Clown Druid into this face hunter from Turtle. Um, however, Ron is running Scenarian Ward in his Clown Druid, which I think if he's able to survive until he has 8 mana, it's going to be a super impactful card for this matchup. Unfortunately, Ron did not draw the overgrowth, which is uh, the highest. Oh, never mind. Uh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> he didn't draw the overgrowth. And uh, now he has a much higher shot of actually um, making it past the early game to his, his higher value plays. Yeah. Um, I have to say, it, this matchup is, is still... Not favorite for the Clown Druid, but I've been having surprising success as the Clown Druid against Face Hunter. Uh, just because you're able to cheat stats out surprisingly quickly, and with cards like the scenario where that we're seeing, uh, you can often stabilize. I mean, we're going to see the uh, the Overgrowth come out on turn uh, turn four. Uh, with five mana, then we're going to see eight mana the following turn. We're going to see Scenario Ward into strong mana, extremely strong, strong play okay. uh, that will shut this face hunter out. So, um, never mind. Well, it seems like Ron disagreed and decided he would rather play that Twilight Runner there. I don't know if I agree with that. I think that the the line of playing Scenario Ward and strong man this turn seems a lot better than getting yeah. down this five four. You're only looking at four damage on board. I think you can afford to continue to pass and ramp. Yeah, I mean, the problem with uh, primordial, Dru primordial Druid is that it usually has a very hard time getting to 8 mana, and Ron had the opportunity to get to 8 mana right there and passed it up uh, in order to just take more damage, I guess. So uh, we'll see what he draws off of this uh, attack here. It has to be something very good. Well, he hit the Lightning Bloom, so like he is not being punished. Um, Ooh, and he's running Samuro. I'm interested to see whether we decide to Lightning Bloom at our Guardian, or if we decide to Lightning Bloom Scenarian. And I think I agree with this choice to play Guardian instead. Um, Guardian's a much more proactive board play in this position, and alongside the Strongman, it's still going to prevent you from taking some damage for the next few turns, and can hopefully keep your opponent off the board until you're able to play that scenario. Unfortunately, Ron probably got the only two beasts that didn't clear the board there. Uh, because he got the uh, the two that weren't the uh, the Lake Thresher that would uh, cleave the board. Um, not right in that juicy one one that, that was in the center of those two minions. It would have killed both of those, uh, both that and the Mancrick, and then would have allowed him to kill off the three seven with the remaining Rusher. But instead, uh, getting the other two minions means he's drawing some cards, but in the same uh, sort of unfortunate uh, position. I mean, we're going to see that the Promoter Druid now has some amount of free reign to take some time off, uh, actually improve the board state and, uh, and stay at a high health total, but this, uh, the trampling rhinos might be coming out soon and send, sounding the death knell for Ron. Um, I mean, I think he's going to be able to play these scenario wards before those trampling rhinos come down, or at least at the same time those trampling rhinos come down, and um, if if you had to ask me to pick between a trampling rhino and a scenario ward, I, I think the person with the scenario ward is going to win most of the time. Uh, so here's the thing: is that um, this trampling rhino gets to attack twice next turn. Uh, so it's going to attack over the twilight runner for six damage, and then uh, once this mancrit trades off uh, somehow into the, possibly the moonfang, it gets to attack again because of the weapon. So 
uh, we actually are going to see quite a huge amount of damage. Uh, and then we're probably going to see this, uh, the quick shots ended off. I actually don't think that Ron has a chance to, uh, to really stabilize here. We'll have to see what he decides to do this turn. Uh, the line that I'm looking at is playing this overgrowth followed by the nature studies. But uh, Ron's decide to nature studies first. And germination on Moonfang would be huge. Yeah. Absolutely necessary. This, this could really change things. Uh, Ron is going to mill a card from these Twilight Runners, but I don't think that's much of a concern at this point. So the Wound Prey does kill off the taunted Moonfang. But, because of the high attack the Moonfangs, it might still be... No, I mean, uh, you can still do the same sort of play if you uh, ping off the Moonfang with the Wound Prey and kill it off. You can uh, Tramping Rhino into the 5-3 and then Weapon mm -hmm. into the 6-2 and still deal quite a lot of damage. Um, how does Rhino interact with Moonfang? Is it, does it still trample over for the damage? We're probably about to find out. Fair enough. See. No damage. Wow. That's huge. Scenarian okay. Ward plus Strongman can now come down this turn and probably it's going to just seal the game. Yeah, uh, if that six damage was able to go face, then Ron would be dead from two quick shots. But because of that, uh, there's actually no shot for Turtle anymore once he closes the door here. I don't think he would be dead from two quick shots just because he does get. Um, hopefully Ron spots the lethal. Uh oh, uh, Turtle spots it for him. That, that's a win for Clown Druid, and we started off with a 2-0 for Turtle, but Turtle's two remaining classes are both really, really weak to Clown Druid. We might be seeing a reverse sweep for Ron. Turtle's last hope might be the OTK DH if he brought it. Uh, I I don't know I don't know if you've seen the stats for that, but that is that is not a hope I want to have against Clown Druid. I mean, as long as he can combo on turn six, it doesn't matter what your opponent has. Well, embrace the chaos. Oh, this is a uh, quite a bad matchup. This is a uh, extremely um, extremely tough choice, a uh, tough spot for the for the warrior here. Uh, warriors just going to develop its, its minions in the mid-game and then get bullied by the incredibly huge monsters that the, uh, that the druid puts out. There are some chances, but uh, they are slim. And we see overgrowth in the hand of the druid, and that's really, really the card that seals this matchup. Uh, that also being combined with um, no real early game for Turtle probably means that, that the, war or the, the druid's going to be able to ramp before Rush Warrior can put on pressure. Um, the, the really important cards for the Warrior in this matchup are cards like Parade Leader and Playmaker that let you get these massive board advantages before the Clown Druid starts ramping. Cards like Runthak, Tent Trasher, and Alex, they don't do much when your opponent's responding to them with Primordial Protectors and Clowns. Yeah, I mean, there are uh, certain builds of Primordial Druid that run early uh, removal, but a lot of them choose not to. We do see a Feral Rage picked for this druid so that he does have some chance of dealing with the uh, the early spots of this warrior, but it turns out he does, doesn't need it. He's going to uh, comfortably waltz into the eight mana with this Innervate, Innervate, Primordial Protector. Well, it's turn four, let's make a ten drop. Yeah. Um, there is a Mutinous in the hand for the Rush Warrior, and if they're able to survive this Primordial Protector, that could be huge in counteracting these clowns in the survival. Uh, but that's a pretty big if when you're staring down 16 damage on your turn. Job's done. Yeah, it's uh, also a, a pretty big if uh, whether or not he um, even gets to play Mutinous before this uh, survival of the fittest comes down and then, and then clowns start coming out. Uh, it might just be too much pressure. I don't know if you're worried about the, the clowns at this point. You're worried about uh, being dead next turn on board. <laughs> you, you have to play the Sword Eater, otherwise you're just dead. Well, uh, you, you could also um, tent, 
uh, tra Trasher. Uh, okay, so anyways, going on to, uh, to the <laughs> final <laughs> game number five. This is the, this is the words we always want to hear from these, uh, from these sorts of matches. An extremely tight uh, 2-0 versus an 0-2, swinging it right back. And now we're going to see DH, whatever Turtle is bringing, versus this Primordial Druid. Four, uh, wherever I may roam's chances at a playoff spot. I must protect the wild. Hmm? Ah, this is the Lifesteal OTK Demon Hunter. And this, honestly, this doesn't look good for Turtle. Yeah, with, uh, with a lack of card draw and a lack of outcast skull opportunity here, I uh, don't see him really getting off to the races as fast as Ron is going to. Especially with an overgrowth top deck. Oh my god. Ron is absolutely clinching every opportunity he can. A line worth considering for Ron is just playing the Twilight Runner this turn. Um, if you expect OTK Demon Hunter, generally the, the earliest they're going to be able to clear that off is turn turn 4, turn 5-ish. Yeah, and Ron decides to just go for it. Um, if you're able to draw 4 or even 6 cards off of this and hit your opponent for 15, that, that can really swing a game. Now, unfortunately, the Immolation Aura isn't going to uh, fully clear it off, especially if he trades. Um, just because the, uh, the Thalnos dies before the second branch of the Immolation Aura happens. But Ron doesn't well, even give the opportunity. Playing this Illidari studies, I don't know if I agree with that, because if we didn't hit exactly I-Beam or this Dreadlord's Bite, um, we didn't have a way to clear off the Twilight Runner. I think Turtle got, got a little rewarded there, but I don't know if I agree with that play. Um. Well, there was also an opportunity to hit the, uh, the free mana 3-2 that gives your uh, Demon Hunter plus 3 attack. Uh, that was one more way that's to... True, uh, that's true, that's true. And Ron is just gonna casually go up to eight mana. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Hey, we uh, we have the Ilgi, we have the philosophy. Uh, we just need some life steal damage, and we're actually looking very close to killing Ron. Um, I I think you're you're failing to take into the account the fact that we only have five mana right now, and if we're getting life steal spells. We're probably going to be having to use this to clear off these minions before we just die. If we allow uh, some of the minions to, to deal their face damage, we may get just enough time. But uh, with the right top deck, of course. Being a skull right here? Never mind. Okay. We're going to be forced to play this Arcanist plus Aura combo and then just pray that it's not a good 7 drop. That's a really Ooh. good 7-drop. Well, it, it may be a good 7-drop if you can damage it, but Druid can't damage their own minions like that. So, as long as, uh, as, long as these clowns are the things being cleared off by the spells that uh, the turtle plays, it shouldn't be a problem that the, uh, the Bone Shooter Vanguard is, uh, is here to actually deal lots of damage, because it's just a 4-attack minion. Lots and lots of time. Turtle here. Mm -hmm. Well, in clearing off these clowns, it's going to go up to an 8 attack minion. Still, Ron is not quite out of reach, even though being at 30 health means that he is uh, quite up there. This OTK Demon Hunter is going to get a lot of spell damage from all these Moarchs. However, uh, if he has to start playing them in order to avoid lethal next turn, that's it. And it looks yeah. like... Turtle is... Turtle is dead. Looks like Ogi's on board. I mean, if Ron concedes... Uh, okay. Yeah, there's no skull. Yeah, if your opponents played a skull, and then they play Ilganoth, you concede, but... There's not, there hasn't been a skull plate so far. And yeah, that is a very fast reverse sweep from Ron with the Clown Druid. Proving that 
face hunter is is just the place for ron uh face hunter almost completely sweeping and then as soon as face hunter comes out from under uh then turtles entire lineup just collapses Whew. okay that's one way to do it <laughs> lord wow thanks for congratulations oh my god wherever i'm at rome fans are cheering uh, look, I tried to get there straight up, but Hunter just high rolled me. So I was like, I guess it's time to scam. So we scammed the crap out of him in three games. <laughs> Why didn't you just play He's... that the first time, dude? You would have won. Yeah, maybe, maybe that was the move. I was literally <laughs> trying to dodge the Hunter with the Druid because the Druid lined up really well to the other two. So I'm like, let's just lead Hunter. If he goes to the Hunter first, I can counter the Hunter with the Warrior. But then he's just pulling wife like constantly all the time yeah. right at the very beginning i'm like oh god this is not good yeah wife, uh, wife seemed to script. come out quite a bit it was, i was really surprised every time you know man crick hit the board it was like card later angry man crick comes out one code obama later yeah uh, i mean so he did he did pull wife twice with code obama which you know makes sense but the other one was extra yeah. tilting Ron, I have, a, I have a question for you and your and your druid play. Uh, was there a reason you decided to put the overgrowth on the top of your deck instead of in your mulligan? Uh, I, yeah, I just druid strats, you know. Top deck to turn one, both the third game and the fifth game. I mean, you just have the skill. Yes, yeah, it's really important to do that. Druid gamers got to listen up and and. Uh... Make sure you draw right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. It would have been nice if I drew right in the other games, right? Like, Hunter had no chance versus Hunter, and Warrior just got steamrolled. Like, even just the Samuro, and maybe I'm okay, but, oh, those are brutal. So, uh, I did have two really favorable matchups with Druid. Once I got the high roll on the Hunter, then I was like, okay, I think I think we got this. But we'll see. And then, of course, the draws just went insane, too. So that was very fortunate for me. I mean, Ron, I don't know if you've seen my stats from Masters qualifiers, but it seems like Face Hunter is also a favorable for Clown Druid. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, yeah, no. just, just play Scenarian Ward on turn four, and you, you win most of the games. And I think we, you know, we saw that happen on stream. Just play scenario and win. Pretty simple. Yeah, the the ward is definitely a really important inclusion in that list, I feel. And it it paid off big time. Despite the fact that uh despite the fact that Turtle uh, did not end up winning the match, is uh the Demon Companion going to be the RNG card of the week, getting that Kolek in the game two and absolutely steamrolling your warrior? Uh unlikely. Unlikely that that would be RNG card of the week. Um, Kolek was definitely a nice pull for him, though. But uh, I I think the way that game was going, honestly, maybe Wife is RNG card of the week because that was arguably the uh, the worst outcome for me. Is it RNG? It always knows to attack face. <laughs> <laughs> RNG to pull it, but yeah, it does. Hey. It does know where the place is. If Wife on 4 were the RNG card of the week, I think we'd have the same card for the past, <laughs> past few months. Easy. So we're, we're, uh, we were debating between, what was it, Hunter and... Was it Warrior? I can't remember where... Or was it... Uh, no, it was Druid. Where it was against Moofang, and when he brought out the, uh, the Rhino, if he hit with that weapon, and then we were seeing if the Rhino did damage when we kind of surprised oh yeah i've actually experienced that exact interaction the hard way as well i set up a lethal against somebody where i hit the moonfang and the rhino is going to get the overkill on it and i was like oh this is sweet and then it didn't happen but does that because happen? Oh, good. The, the text specifically reads that moonfang only takes one damage so when moonfang is down to one health it doesn't matter how high attack the rhino okay. has when it's hitting it the Moonfang is taking one damage from it. Okay, because that was if it was any other uh, minion left, I'm sure. But yeah, that was a rough one to yeah. um, to experience for the first time for me, and then uh, it was pretty pretty rough there for Turtle. Although I don't think it would have changed the outcome. I think I had already effectively stabilized at that point. Yeah. 
Yeah, at that point, it did not actually because uh, the ward was coming down. Or not I mean, it he didn't know out. it, but yeah, it just it made him die out. slightly faster, but it wouldn't have made a, a real difference. Well, I I think the other option there that was not killing the Moonfang, in which case, I believe he would have been dead all the same because he would have been able to just bloom out the survival and have lethal on board. Yeah. Yeah, either way. And uh, as it happened, I wound up getting lucky off the Scenarian Ward for um, the, uh, the the Troublemaker to give me exact lethal. I was about to bloom out the uh, hero power and then he conceded beforehand. <laughs> uh, not that it was any less over, even if I didn't have the bloom. Right. Yeah. Turtle saw the dog dog wasn't happening and uh you know knew that that was the end of the ropes yeah and then that game five uh i mean wow i was like i'm just gonna keep this twilight runner because uh i'm gonna try to find some ramp and get it out and then apparently i could just get it out on turn one and top deck you know the overgrowth to have a turn three follow up with coin overgrowth that everything just came together amazingly well like Turtle did have me very, very nervous when I saw Ilganoth and a bunch of Moarks. I was like, wait, hold up, no, not like this. No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Just mana. Mana was the issue. So So if wherever I'm in Rome does end up making it into playoffs, if um Vo- Vote of Some Confidence ends up winning against Ask HS in the last match here, uh, then how do you feel about your chances against Dad Legend? Oh, I, I like our chances against anybody. We uh, had a rocky season, a little bit of ups and downs, and then we really caught fire towards the end of the season. And we were on a tear heading into the final week. And then 1337 squad just kind of beat us up. So uh, we're looking to bounce back if we make it in. And I think think we got a decent shot. We'll see what happens. <laughs> just looking at Dead Legend and... In- Inferno THL. I've never seen three O's back and forth like that. <laughs> yeah, there was the uh, the Pog Merchants uh, did three O all the way down nice. uh, in a wild match um, earlier this season, but nice. certainly rare. Yep. So, all right. Well, Ron, uh, any final messages before we let you go for the evening? And thanks for uh, uh, really yanking our chain dude to, to kind of get us on stream here so uh yeah it's it it fun i i thought it was uh up we, we got it in like just in the nick of time and hope you all enjoyed thanks for having me on it was certainly definitely a, a massive roller coaster for me i'm sure it was for a lot of everyone watching as well but uh happy to be a part of this as always and uh thank you guys for all you do awesome all right. Well, that pretty much closes down our Sunday showdown. Um, tune in to... I don't, is uh, Mako doing the saloon this week? Or is it next week? I can't remember. I know he's Let doing every check. Anyway, so just keep an eyeball on the uh, the content channel. Um, and we should have uh, saloon going. We have Ron's wonderful uh, uh, Heart Center show, then we have uh, Tavern Talk, and then we, of course, we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday with all our other lovely matches. So be prepared to be uh, bombarded between myself, Fish, uh, and Lotus Knight to try and get you guys' matches all scheduled. So uh, on behalf of all our casters, uh, thanks to Geranium Battle and uh, Nice Jewish Shao for casting, and thanks to Ron Turtle for jumping on. We will see you guys soon. Well, Monday. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Have a great night, everyone.